We look forward to celebrating. We look forward to celebrating 15 years of collective giving this year. What started as a movement to get 50 women together turned into more than 200 women in 15 years, granting more than 1 million to invest in impacting the lives of women and girls throughout our community. Today, we will be joined by a few special women and girls who were directly impacted by the Women's Giving Circle. To get us started, I would like to welcome one of the founding members and previous chair of the Women's Giving Circle, Marilyn Tubb. Thanks, Erica. It's nice to see all these friendly, familiar faces of women who have made a difference in our community all these many years. And 15 years ago, it's, it's, it surprises me it's been that long, but the women on the board of the Community Foundation at that time did two really good things 15, 16 years ago. First, we hired Barzella Papa as our first full-time executive director and a very wonderful addition. And second, we, um, we stole an idea from Ocala. A member of the board, Bar uh, Susanna Patty, was a friend of someone who was on a women's giving circle, I think it's a slightly different name, at the hospital in Ocala. Susanna went down there, came back with the idea of, why don't we do something that will raise the visibility of the community foundation, would engage more women in our community in philanthropy, and would do some good in our community. And we said, well, if Ocala can do it, we can do it. So um, there was a good little competitive spirit there. And we, uh, oh, six, five or six of us uh, uh, together kind of kind of Marilyn, I think you got muted. Yeah. Her? Now, how long have I been muted? This whole time? No, just no. about 10 seconds. Well, you missed the most important part. No. Um, we, went, we decided we would have a, an event, a luncheon, and invite our friends and say, we want your money. But we wanted to do that more <clears throat> recently than that. And so uh, we had the luncheon and we probably invited more than a hundred and maybe 80 people came, 60 to 80, I can't remember, but the club was packed. And uh, we asked people, we described collective giving. And then we asked them, what do you wanna give to? Just children, and that would be boys and girls, or just girls, or girls and women. And certainly the mothers of sons had a particular point of view. Why are you excluding my boys? And we decided really that um, there are a lot of good things going for boys in our community at that time. There weren't so many good things happening for young girls. And there's those great programs at Santa Fe and other places for women, older women, that we didn't want to leave out. Joanne will tell us more about that, I'm sure. Anyway, we, we after a kind of uh, a contentious or at least a, a very, uh, engaged discussion, we came up with the intention of giving, of the Women's Giving Circle, focusing on women and girls. And over the years, we have, we have grown, as, as, as Erica just said, we now have more than 200 members, but the, the, the opportunity is still there. <laughs> and what, what, we have two, two takeaways. I, I know there are other things that other people want to talk about. But I wanted to emphasize that we have seen now directly over 15 years, the power of collective giving, the strength of women in philanthropy in Gainesville. It's there. We've seen it. We've seen it made worse. And we've seen the, and we've seen, the, and we've seen I didn't mean to make that kind of point. <laughs> Should I say something? Should I say something? Should I say something? <laughs> no, 
don't know. I'll continue. Anyway, there's power in collective giving. There's strength in women and philanthropy in this community. Small gifts, $2,000, $4,000, $10,000 can make a huge difference to an organization and to the people they serve. But large gifts, 50 and 60,000 are transformative. And over the years, we've argued back and forth, or not argued, but discussed, is it better to make a lot of small gifts or two or three big impact gifts? And should we build an endowment or should we give all the money away? All these are challenges that I think we've continued to discuss, to discuss over the years. And I think we've reached a, a nice place at this point in town. We have an endowment, we make impact gifts, and we make some small grants for immediate needs. And here's the thing, we still haven't tapped the power of all the women in our community. You and I know so many women who are not part of this organization, who could easily be part of this organization and who should be part of this organization. So I think it's incumbent of us to continue to try to grow the membership as well as do the very good process of making gifts every year. So I'll, I'll shut up, but I just wanna make sure that you understood we did two good things that year. One was create the Women's Giving Circle and the second was hiring Barcella. Thank you. Well, thank you, Marilyn. That was that was a perfect lead in for for my portion. And uh, I'm going to apologize in advance. I made the mistake of working from home today because I wanted to make sure my internet was stable and that I didn't get dropped. But uh, my, my people are here cutting the grass. So hopefully you can hear me okay. And if not, I will just shout and be be super loud. So I am going to actually, um, so that you, you're not just looking at me, I'm going to share my screen here. And <clears throat> let's see. All right, let me hit launch that. And Leslie, is it on the correct one? Just give me a thumbs up. Correct. Okay, so I'm going to go into a little more detail. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? It's loud. I'll go fast. So I'm gonna do a little more detail uh, to expand upon what Marilyn said. Uh, little did I know when I started at the foundation and uh, they said, hey, let's start a women's giving circle. What an impact this would make and how big this would get. And it's just been an incredible journey for me, both personally and professionally to be a part of the women's giving circle. So, so as Marilyn said, this was an idea from the board back in 2006. I it was initially chaired by Susan Parrish whenever we decided to roll out and our goal was to just get 50. We were not quite sure, you know, how this was going to go. Just like Marilyn described, it was, okay, who can we invite to lunch and ask, will you write a check? So we rolled out that very first year and our results were astonishing. We had over 80 women to participate that first year. And just like Marilyn said, we've been learning as we have been growing. So that first year uh, we gave out 76, uh, 76,000 came in. Uh, we put some back out in the community. We decided early on to benefit women and girls and we decided to keep some back uh, to build an endowment fund. But again, this would change off and on over the course of the next few years. In that very first year, and this is important because you're gonna hear uh, in just a minute, from um, some, some recipients from the very, very beginning. Uh, this was the impact, like it, it, it's more than just the contribution and how large we could get the grant, get the grant pool. Uh, we were impacting lives and we realized that right away. So you'll see here, the very first year, we were able to award two scholarships, take, take stock in children uh, to two seventh grade girls. We were able to uh, send 51 girls were awarded scholarships to go to girls place that summer and you're, you're going to hear more about that in a little bit. Um, we were able to establish new Girl Scout troops in neighborhoods that were underserved and uh, did not have troops. So uh, that was so important uh, that we benefited women and girls. And as you see there, the, the fourth grant went to displaced homemakers at Santa Fe College. Uh, so 18 women could uh, attend school. It went for book assistance, again, changing lives. Fast forward 15 years, this is a list of all the organizations that have benefited. There's 43 organizations. Over $1 million has gone right back out, actually $1,000,000 
49,000. After we get through this year, we'll be at the 1.1 over 1.1 million, right back out into the community. So you can see, we have really, really uh, addressed a lot of the issues uh, facing women and girls in our community. And again, it goes back to, these are just snippets of lives that have been changed. Uh, one woman, uh, one single mother, we provided uh, a home for through the Women Build program with Habitat. Uh, eight little school girls went on to receive Women's Giving Circle, Giving Circle scholarships through the Take Stock program. Uh, again, these are just samples. Uh, girls on the Run, we were able to, uh, to, to afford 13 elementary school girls uh, participation in Girls on the Run. 35 girls from Pace received dental treatment one year uh, that otherwise, you know, they may not have received that treatment. 52 girls matched with big brothers, big sisters. Uh, and then, you know, more than 150 women through displaced homemakers, uh, we, we were able to provide educational assistance. And then finally, you know, again, these are just a few, uh, more than 1,600 girls were able to participate in Girl Scouts. So, just a quick recap, because I think we have maybe some new members or potential members. Uh, the, the circle uh, cycles every year. So right now we are kicking off uh, the celebration of our 15th anniversary. Uh, membership is open. Open. You will be getting uh, your appeal packet soon. Uh, you can join at any time. So that, that, that that's kind of misleading because you can, you can get on board at any time and begin participating. But we really start concentrating now uh, through January for um, who's going to join the next grant pool. In February, we shift to grant making mode. And anyone that wants to serve on the grants committee can do so. Uh, it's it's a, a wonderful experience to really learn more about the work taking place in our community. And then in May, as a group, the Women's Giving Circle makes that decision of who's going to receive uh, those funds that are just so critical uh, to carry out uh, work in our community. And then in June, it resets again and the leadership team comes together, plans the year. And so you'll be hearing a little bit later on what the leadership team has planned uh, for us this fall uh, as we roll into our 15th anniversary. A few milestones that I love to share uh, that just, it just, again, it demonstrates the importance of our giving circle. Uh, we were actually, we were mentioned in the New York Times early, early on, that's that very first news article that Gainesville got a shout out from a, a story about women's giving circles around the country. The Gainesville Sun uh, um, obviously has covered us as well. And then we have that beautiful statue at Celebration Point uh, from a few years ago. I think that was our, our 10 year celebration was uh, memorialized there at Celebration Point. And then also along the way, we've had some key members uh, and key support uh, through the Women's Giving Circle that I'd like to share. Uh, back a few years ago, I think it was 2012, we really uh, focused on building our endowment in the Cade family. There's a lovely picture there of Dr. and Mrs. Uh, Robert Cade. And the Cade family uh, stepped up and contributed $25,000 toward the Women's Giving Circle's permanent fund. Uh, two or three years ago, we launched a lifetime membership category, and we'll see there that uh, Kay Ayer, Sheila Dickinson, and Nancy Perry uh, were our pioneer members for lifetime memberships. And then I'm excited to share with you all, I believe it was in the most recent newsletter, uh, but Vam York, who was a founding member on that steering committee, uh, was a longtime supporter of the Women's Giving Circle. Uh, <clears throat> and she unfortunately passed earlier this year, but in her estate, she has gifted the Women's Giving Circle's permanent fund a $50,000 gift as well to continue the work of the Women's Giving Circle. So currently, just to give you a quick financial snapshot, uh, last year with COVID, uh, the word of the year was pivot and the Women's Giving Circle did just that as well. And we did shift our grant making to be able to respond to immediate needs. And we actually, instead of doing that one grant cycle, we divided it up into three grant cycles and the committee has worked really, really hard. They are in the process right now of awarding another 30,000 that will be going out. So you'll see there that the grant pool balance currently is $58,800, of which 30 will be going back out. So our cumulative will continue to grow. Our endowment is almost to 300,000, which is just wonderful because that generates interest that is added to the grant pool uh, year after year. So the, the, the larger we can get that fund, uh, the more that we can put in the grant pool that will be going out uh, annually. So with that, I know we're gonna hear from um, 
some from uh, individuals who have directly benefited, but I wanted to just open it up and see if there's any questions that on the financial snapshot, uh, any questions at all? And Leslie, I know you're, you, you can keep an eye out because I can't see very well if anybody raises their hand or unmutes. Well, with that being said, we are going to dive into uh, the heart of today, and I'm going to turn it over now to a member of the leadership team who will uh, introduce our first speaker and Megan Jansen. Megan, are you there? I'm here. Perfect. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Megan Jansen, um, and I have the privilege of introducing um, some speakers today that you'll get to hear from that will help really personalize what you've um, heard so far today from Marilyn and Barzella. So first, um, we are going to hear from um, Santa Fe College's um, Displaced Homemakers. So the Women's Gaming Circle provided grant funding for Santa Fe College to help get women back in the workplace. Through Back to Work 50 Plus and Displaced Homemakers, the Women's Giving Circle has granted more than $125,000 to help get women trained and working. I would like to turn it over to Joanne Wilkes from Santa Fe College to introduce our guests. You're still on mute, Joanne. Perfect. Uh, yes. okay. yep. um, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Uh, just hearing the history. And I remember so much of that as that was evolving. And uh, Barzella, like you, I am so sorry. I am in the uh, Asheville airport and on vacation, which is why I have vacation here, but you know, I'm going with it today. Uh, but I knew that this was important enough for me to take the time to come and talk to you. So as you know, the Displaced Homemaker Program has been a recipient of the grants. And then most recent, which has been a wonderful boon to the women who are going to school. But most recently, uh, we partnered also with the AARP Foundation for the Back to Work 50 Plus program, targeting specifically women um, who needed to either re-career or were looking for employment. And we designed a program based on what the DHP does, but to include computer skills and individual support. Each one of the participants got a coach. So there was somebody there that they could call if they needed to. So we had Carolyn Doss, Michelle Levitt, and Sally Sinclair, and Dr. Biawani, who is not available today, who were able to uh, mentor and to be there and support women. So it has been an amazing program. And only five colleges originally were chosen for this and it is expanded across the country now. And the format when they did the data research for the first five years, they showed that Santa Fe did really well in the data with education and employment. So I'm fortunate to have, when I put the word out that I need some people to speak today, I had two immediate volunteers. Um, and so I'm so proud of them. Um, I'm gonna introduce Jerry McMillan first. And she has a fabulous story. And if you look at the Santa Fe website, I think there's a video still there with her telling her story. So Jerry. Yes, hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Jerry McMillan. I'm a recipient of the Back to Work 50 Plus program. I started the program back in 2015. I had previously worked for 28 years at one job. And then the job decided to downsize in 2015. And then I was affected by that. So I started looking for a job and then in 2015, I saw a flyer with Back to Work 50 Plus Helping Women. And I decided to attend the seminar and I was selected for the program. And one of the things that I love most about this that I was over the age of 50 and I felt like I was struggling for 11 months, not getting the job I wanted, not getting the job I needed to get back reemployed. Uh, the Back to Work 50 Plus program, it helped me with my job search, resume writing, interview skills, and body language, and the things that I needed, uh, wardrobe attire uh, that we needed, helping with our computer skills, and app, because all the applications now are online. The program met the women where they were, no matter what their skills level uh, was in their lifestyle. It met us, it helped motivated us, it empowered us. It provided resource tools to go out there and get the job and get the right paying job. The assessment that was did for this program, they assess each woman need, 
where we, what we needed and it tailored the program around our needs. They provided us with a checklist and they tracked our achievement by weekly, follow up with counseling review. It helped track us and kept the state on track and made sure that we were successful with completing the program. I myself, I took several business classes uh, through the program. I took some accounting class, a power book class, a computer class, and there were other areas of assistance that was provided uh, for us for paying for classes, for books, for fees, supplies, uniform, or whatever needs that that person needed to be successful in obtaining the right job. I wanna thank the Women's Circle for your generosity in helping the back to work 50 plus. I was impacted by this. And throughout this program, I want you to know that because of the training and you're given and the skills that I have, I obtained a job at Santa Fe College and I'm, I'm like you to know that I'm currently making 51, I'm currently making $41,000 today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jerry. I mean, she, she let me know she was ready and she was ready. Thank you, Jerry. And I love seeing her on campus. It makes me happy. Um, our other participant today is Liz Carter. And Liz has a different story, but a similar story. So she's gonna tell you a little bit about herself. So okay. there, I can hear your voice. Okay, so I'm Liz Carter and I, I also work at Santa Fe College, but I went through the Back to Work 50 Plus program. Um, in 2018, I had been self-employed for most of my adult life. Um, also moved and didn't quite have the skills to go out and get a job or the confidence. Um, and going through the Back to Work 50 Plus program was such a wonderful experience for me. All the women were so supportive. Um, and because of that and all the skills that I received, just like Geraldine, um, I had got three job offers while I was going through the program. Um, and I they helped me choose which job was be perfect for me. Um, and since then, I have, I'm on my second job now at the college. So it, it's, it was absolutely the best experience. I cannot say enough about that program and all the helpers and people at Santa Fe College who helped me get through this because Joanne still is a godsend to me. She just, it's so nice to have such support behind it. And, and you all seem like a wonderful group of women who also support women, which is something I love to do now is to give back to other women because it's important for us to build us up, up. So thank you so much. So I did just want to add that um, when the AARP Foundation grant changed and it was no longer available, they morphed it into something completely different. And we felt that the contact, the individual contact with people was so important, not doing everything remotely. Um, but the displaced homemakers just picked up that challenge and we continue to work with people. We have targeted our own specific population of DHB, but then the Back to Work 50 Plus program, we have never stopped working with them. And so we want each to be as successful as Liz. So thank you, Liz, for um, coming and speaking with the Women's Giving Circle today. They are, the Women's Giving Circle is a great, great group of women and so supportive of other women. Are. But thank you. Joanne, thank you so much for, for joining us today. We have a few minutes that we can take um, some questions. So I know sure. Leslie will be uh, uh, helping me watch. If you have a question, just uh, raise your hand or um, we'll watch for you to unmute now. Um, or you can use the, I meant to say this earlier, the, the chat box as well if you wanna uh, ask questions. But I, I did get one message to me and I'll, I'll start with Geraldine. Um, what advice would you give someone over the age of 50 looking to gain a new skill or get back into the workforce? So we'll, we'll start with Geraldine and then uh, uh, same question, Liz, for, for both of you to answer. I am constantly sharing the Back to Work 50 Plus program here at Santa Fe College. I work in the financial aid department and I come across people with different uh, situations and they tell me this, the struggles of what they're going to. I point them in the direction of the Back to Work 50 Plus because that was the gate of the door that opened for me. So I'm constantly trying to tell them, and even in the rural sector, I live in Archer, 
I've even talked to the people out there about trying to become a, a board and if they're unemployed and then the previous company I worked for, I find that these people have been laid off or their families come in and they're trying to do professional judgment. They live here in the Gainesville area and they've been downsized. So I recommend the program highly to everybody. Every opportunity I get. Thank you, Geraldine. Liz? I also recommend the program very highly. Um, I also tell women that you, just because you're over 50, you don't think you can get these jobs, but they want people our age to work because we show up and we have commitment, we have work ethic. Um, that is the most important thing to get out there is that women of, of our over 50 are, are very good employees. So, and this program helps so much. I've told a lot of people who actually just from little tidbits of talking, they pick up and they go on to get a job um, because you need that self-confidence behind you. And that's what Joanne's program does. So, And absolutely, I've had referrals from both Liz and Jerry come to my office and say, um, I was talking to them, can, can you help me? And uh, we absolutely can, and, and it, you know, we still, still teach computer skills, and um, even though the last year, I went, you know, I, I love to teach, so I went back in the classroom in February to teach some basic computer skills to people, and we had, uh, we had quite a few really good uh, participants. I don't know if there are any other questions. I am not seeing any hands raised. Uh, so, Joanne, I know you have a vacation that is awaiting you, and so we want to thank you so much for taking time out at the airport and joining us, and Geraldine, Liz, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your stories. Uh, uh, thank you so much, and we are so proud of, of, of everything that you've accomplished, so thank you again. Thank you, Marzella, for all you do, too. Thank you, and the Women's Giving Circle. So, Megan, Megan, who's next? So next, um, we have the Education Foundation and their Take Stock in Children program. They have, they have been awarded more than $90,000 since 2007. This includes an impact grant of $50,000 in 2014. I would like to introduce the Executive Director of the Education Foundation, Rachel Debeguer. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Like Megan said, I'm Rachel Debegar. Um, and in true Zoom fashion, the internet at our office just went out. So I am really, uh, I'm thankful for uh, Wi-Fi or uh, cell service connectivity, and hopefully that will be strong enough to get me through. Um, really quickly, you know, when I hear that over ninety thousand dollars, I'm sitting here looking at a list. Um, it's of the names of the students that you all have sponsored, and each one of these girls represents an individual story. And just looking, I'm. I'm uh, I've been at the foundation for 10 years, so a lot of these girls I know personally and have been able to follow them. They're working, they're graduated from college. Um, very briefly, if you're not familiar with the Take Stock in Children program, essentially we work with low-income, at-risk, uh, middle and high school students in our community. We pair them with a volunteer mentor. We monitor their grades, behavior, in attendance. And then when they graduate from high school, if they stay drug and crime free, if they keep their grades up, then they actually get a um, Florida prepaid college scholarship. So you all have really invested in the future of these young girls, now many of whom are now women in our own community. Um, and like Megan and Leslie had mentioned, we did receive the an impact grant. And so I believe there's a video that you all are going to watch with one of our impact grant recipients who is now um, successfully uh, enrolled in college and, and attending at UF. Hello everyone, my name is Annalise White. I am a sophomore at the University of Florida. Um, I've been a part of the Take Stock in Children program since I was in the seventh grade, and I'm extremely grateful for it and for you all um, 
contributing to the program and making it um, more possible for low income students like myself to go to college. Um, I went to um, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln Middle School. And after that, I went to Gainesville High School where I was a part of the um, Academy of Health Professions. Um, I had a wonderful time in Take Stock. I think one of the most meaningful and wonderful part of being a part of Take Stock was having Mrs. Lowry in my life. Um, she really helped shape me into the person that I am today. And um, the program provided many resources um, that helped me and my family navigate um, the college process. Um, the University of Florida has always been my dream school. And um, for me, it's proof that my hard work has paid off. Um, after um, completing my four years at the University of Florida, I'm looking to um, go into medical school and possibly pursuing a career in anesthesiology. I first met Annalise when we were paired together and they had a kickoff meeting at Kanapa Middle School. And she was there with her family. Um, as a Cape Stock student, Annalise had to sign a contract um, relative to how she would perform, things that she committed to do to be able to participate as part of the Cape Stock program. And so I had the opportunity to go and, and meet Annalise. Um, this was at the end of her sixth grade year. Uh, when she was accepted into the program. And so uh, I guess we've, we've known each other for over eight years now. <laughs> I just had heard about Take Stock. I was actually on the board of the Education Foundation for a while. And in my career, I traveled a lot. So at first, I didn't think I could participate as a mentor because they, as mentors, they like you to have a regular meeting with, with your student. And with my travel schedule, I didn't think that I would be able to do that. But Annalise was always so accommodating to my schedule in terms of us being able to get together. And she was always very responsive so that we could plan um, almost every week. We, we didn't make every week, but almost every week we were able to get together. And um, I found it as a mentor to be incredibly rewarding. Um, I, but fortunately her parents have shared her with me because I have three boys. So she's the daughter I didn't get to have. And, and we have had, we had, a, we stayed together the entire, um, the entire time from seventh grade through graduation. And, um, she, she was also dual enrolled. So she went to Santa Fe college for her last two years. And we were still able to, to make sure we carved out some time to spend together as she, um, very successful in high school and, and then obviously has gone on to be um, successful at the University of Florida as well. Um, sometimes it's just encouragement. Sometimes there's just, you're, you become that encourager. Uh, Annalise was an excellent student, so she didn't really need me that much academically. Now, getting your driver's license maybe, but not so much academically. I mean, um, one of the, one of my, one of the best memories um, I have from being in Take Stock is um, meeting Mrs. Lowry and having her in my life for the last eight years. Um, I truly look forward to meeting with her every week because she helped me in so many ways. Um, to this day, I, I praise her for helping me um, become as confident as I've become. So my favorite, I think, time in Take Stock was the opportunity that I had with Annalise to share birthdays and, and special events. Um, she and, and one of my kids share a birthday. Um, in fact, she's got one coming up soon. Um, but it going into the middle school cafeteria and just waiting for her to come around the corner from her classes was always really a special moment for me because I would see her a smiling face and um, you know she would she would light up and I would light up and it was just always a special moment when I would see her coming around that corner. Take stock. If you're thinking about taking on the Take Stock program, I would really encourage you to do so. Uh, it is incredibly rewarding for for the mentor. And it really provides that extra resource that many of these students really need. 
um, information that they may not have access to otherwise. And also, thank you again to the Women's Giving Circle. We truly do appreciate your contributions to the Take Stock and Children program. So, Rachel, I um, I have uh, two questions that came through. That uh, uh, first one: uh, How many? How many, how many students do you currently have in the Take Stock program? Or did we lose her? You know? Oh, oh there you are. Here. You gotta love, you always say you're not gonna talk while you're muted and then you do it anyways. Um, we have 270 students um, in the Take Stock and Children program currently. That's in the seventh through the 12th grade. Um, we, that is actually a little small for us recently. Many of you who have, um, known take stock for a while know that we used to be, uh, had about 120 kids or so, and then, um, really put some effort in. Obviously you all have supported us greatly in wanting and trying to grow. And, um, we really like to be upwards of 300 students. It was really difficult for us to recruit the volume of students that we typically recruit during the pandemic. And so we are placing, um, in fact, we had events last night and tonight to help with student recruitment. And um, so our goal is in the next two years, hopefully to get back up to about 350. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's, I, I know you've grown uh, significantly over the past few years. Now, uh, I, I, have a, I have one more, something to ask. I know uh, we've been talking about celebrating 15 years of the Women's Giving Circle. Well, I know your organization has a big anniversary this year as well. So you wanna share with everyone? Oh, yes. And I don't know, you might not be able to see it, but we just got our 35th anniversary pins in today. Um, and we are, I am just so excited. I certainly, um, so here's a, a little example. We have a, a 35th anniversary logo um, that we're, we're putting out this year. We turned 35 on August 20th. And so, you know, I can't, I absolutely cannot claim credit for so many that have supported our foundation even well before I was involved, but I'm so proud to be leading our organization through its 35th year. And, you know, I just, I've been a part of the education foundation for 10 years now in a couple different capacities. And it's really just overwhelming to me, the amount of support that our community has for public education and for our students and teachers. And um, it's really humbling to be executive director and to know and, and appreciate our community for all that you all have provided for us. Well, thank you again so much for joining us today. If I don't, I'm looking at, I don't, I don't see any hands up. If anyone, we have another minute or so with Rachel. If anyone has a question, I will keep my eyes. I'm going between, gotta love Zoom. And I'm not seeing any, but Rachel, you are welcome to, to stay on and join us. And thank you for all that, that, that you. you do in the Education Foundation and the Take Stock program. I know I've had my own personal experience. I love the Take Stock program. Uh, but, and thank you again so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for the invitation. All right, Megan, who's yes. our final speaker? It is the third, the third speaker. So next we have Girls Place. And Girls Place was one of the first grant recipients in 2006, 2007 uh, for the Women's Giving Circle. They were also awarded a $50,000 impact grant in 2018 to help expand their building to serve more girls in our community. The Women's Giving Circle has invested almost $120,000 in Girls Place over the last 15 years. I would like to introduce the Executive Director of Girls Place, Christy Arrington. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, like Rachel and Joanne, I'm super grateful to be here. Um, I remember very vividly the first uh, luncheon where funds were awarded. And I sat there in awe with our executive director, Renee Clements at that point, just saying, man, I wanna be part of that one day. Um, and so thank you for the opportunity for the under 40 rate. <laughs> That's when I was able to jump on. Um, now well over 40. Um, but happy to be a part of the Women's Giving Circle as a member um, and super grateful for Girls Place. Um, so for some of you, you've been with Girls Place since the beginning. We were a girls club of Alachua County when we first started in the mid 80s. 
And, um, and I, again, remember that first grant request. Um, and the way I learned how to write grants was Renee handed me a piece of paper and said, here you go, it's due next week. Um, so the training was pretty in depth. Um, but at that time, I didn't even know how to ask necessarily. And um, something that was really important to me at the time was that um, we could step away from Excel documents and um, in totaling our, our members. And so that was part of the investment was um, supporting those 51 girls um, with summer scholarships, but also getting a program that would be able to give us our demographics in a moment, uh, which seems like such a luxury now. Um, but um, when I see um, Rachel's kids talk and when I see Joanne's uh, women talk, I just see the community and I see the village. And um, I think that's the most significant growth that I've had in my time here at Girls Place is knowing that um, it does take this village. And, um, and we have a video of Angelica. Um, she is one of our kids. She was um, here 15 years ago and she'll tell you a little bit more. And then I have a comment after you listen to her story. My name is Angelica Rents, and I am 28 years old. Um, well, I went to Girls Place when it was actually called Girls Club. Um, I started my fifth grade summer going into sixth grade. Uh, and I don't know, I, I stayed there up until high school because I really enjoyed going and I actually met uh, some of my closest friends there. Um, um, I actually learned how to play sports there. I played when I went, I played basketball, track, and I did softball too, but I really stuck with track. So I did track all the way up through high school. Um, and I don't know, it just was, it was just a great place to go. They kept us on track most of the time. <laughs> uh, we did, we did our homework there. Um, we got to go on a lot of field trips. I don't know just was a good place to be so <laughs> they definitely became my family especially uh well everybody the counselors the the kids everybody was was like family there um my mom actually my mom passed when I after I graduated high school so only like two weeks after I graduated high school but uh, Miss Christie she actually came to my mom's memorial service. So she, you know, even after I stopped going to girls, girls club or girls place, she was still there for me. Um, again, my best friend, we're still friends from being at girls club. So it definitely became, they, everyone became family there. So. I am still in Gainesville. Um, I, I actually have three children now. Um, I have my one month old and then I have a daughter who is six and a son who's nine. They're in school right now. Um, I actually work for Nationwide Insurance um, full time, but I'm on maternity leave right now. And then I also work at, at Shands Hospital too as an admin, but that's only, only part time. Um, sometimes when I get the chance, I'll volunteer too with um, the Gainesville Striders track team here in town as well, because I'm still big into sports. That's pretty much it, other than being a mom. So, <laughs> um, as far as being a mother, they definitely, I don't know, I, I can kind of use my experiences with them and how, how they guided me to help guide my children. Um, my daughter, she actually was going to girls club for a little while too, she'll be back, but she, she's not there right now. But um, I don't know, it just, they helped me, I don't know, they helped me down a straight path and kept kept me focused, um, which I think I can instill in my children as well. And they also taught dedication and never giving up and sticking with something. So I think that helps me with my job too. <laughs> um, I've been with my job for going on six years now, so. Uh, I don't, yeah, they just, they keep the work ethic in you. So. Um, well, Ms. Christie always brings up the fact that she and I were on, on, on one of the, the buses and 
it broke down. And so she had to push the bus while I had to steer. And I wasn't, I didn't know how to drive for one. So <laughs> that might be a good one. But um, I also liked, we, we used to have the older kids, we used to have slumber parties there. And I used to like those because we, we stay up all night and eat junk. You know, I got to answer the phone right this and second. And play hide and seek in the dark. <laughs> that was probably my favorite thing to do. I don't know. I know where we were at Girl's Place. We were, there's this wall thing <laughs> that we were by, but I don't remember why we were taking pictures. We always just took pictures all the time. Um, I guess just, I never really realized how important pictures were back then. They were just pictures, but they're definitely memories. And some of the people still in that picture, I, I still have um, contact with. Some I don't, I, I don't know where they are, but um, but yeah, some some people in that picture I'm still pretty close with. What do you think? Yeah, it, it definitely um, it definitely makes me happy. I think about Girls Place all the time, uh, cause I spent a lot of part of my life there. Um, well, Girls Place is definitely important. Um, it definitely helps the girls grow. It helped me grow. Um. Sports definitely impacted my life. It helped me. Um, it just was like an outlet for a lot of things. So I'm sure it's an outlet for a lot of the girls that are still there. So it's definitely important to, to have. <laughs> so my comment to Leslie when I first saw this video um, was that my kid ratted me out um, with uh, pushing the vehicle. Um, but on reflecting on it, um, I think it also shows uh, the investment of the Women's Giving Circle um, and the Community Foundation in our girls and women in this community. And that at that time, I felt like it was me and Angelica, like no one was there to help us. We had to do it on our own. Um, and, and you all and your support for our girls is just showing us that we don't have to do it alone. And that if that same situation were to happen today, um, I'm pretty sure that our phone would be ringing off the hook and people would be stopping. And um, and I would not have put a 13 year old in the driver's seat of a broken down van. Um, but again, just so incredibly grateful for you all and um, and your investment with the impact grant um, actually allowed us to maintain who we were serving because the building was built um, right as we opened back up uh, when COVID hit. And so without your support, we would have gone from serving 150 kids in summer camp on a typical summer um, to serving 40, because that's all our old building could um, accommodate. And, um, and we have this super fancy air conditioning system, which um, turns out is perfect for COVID. Um, and so you all created um, an instantaneous safe environment for our kids to come back to. So I'm really grateful. Thank you so much, Christy, for for, so the story was hilarious. Uh, I, sorry, I was dying laughing and she ratted you out. Um, so I, I, I don't, I, 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 as I said earlier, you know, the Women's Giving Circle is more than just collective giving. Uh, it has truly impacted lives. And when we were thinking about the fall and the theme and we were thinking about, well, where are they now? And uh, I have to share this part and then I, I have a question for you. You know, that, that photo that they showed there at the end, we have used throughout the years because that was one of our first and it's a circle and it's girls and it's, it's just, it's a beautiful photo. And when we were um, thinking about this, where are they now? We reached out to Christy and we said, you know, this photo, Christy knows where every one of the girls are. It was amazing. She, 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 she knew where all of them are. Uh, she knew their names and she was like, oh, I just texted her on Wednesday. So, so when you hear stories like Angelica's, how, how proud of you, are you of, of these girls as they are now 28 year old women uh, and older? How proud are you? Yeah, um, incredibly proud. And again, of the team, 
um, Stephanie, my former coworker, is in that photo, and and she and I reminisce quite a bit um, about the little things. And I think that each of us can remember an adult in our lives that said just that one perfect thing um, that motivated us. And I think likewise, we can think about the adult that said the perfect thing that just crushed us. And um, so that's that's who we are and who we create in um, our teams and in our girls. And to hear Angelica say that she is carrying that on with her kids is, is the perfect legacy. Well, thank you, Christy, for, for everything that you do. And Girls Place, we're so, so proud of all the work that you've done and, and the space and the expansion and the programs. Uh, and thank you for joining us. So we have just a few minutes left and I'm super excited uh, for this next portion because you're gonna see how everything has been tied together. So when we were thinking about, you know, 15th year, we needed, we needed to do something really to commemorate this year. And, you know, and we've done all kinds of little things from coffee mugs to, to pens to, to whatever. And we really wanted to go, okay, um, what do we wanna do this year? So we wanted to give uh, a token of appreciation back to all of the members of the Giving Circle and um, to our supporters. So I'm gonna share my screen one more time uh, to do the big unveil because we're so excited to share this. Okay, now let me roll this out. And uh, is it the right one, Leslie? Yay, all right, I didn't want to, I don't want to, I, I can't let y'all see the speaker's view because then it'll give it away. So remember this photo that was uh, in the video? This photo actually was from um, Girls Place received our very first year a $15,800 grant. And this photo was submitted to us whenever they did their final grant report. And I know y'all have seen this, we have used this in a lot of our promotional material. And so uh, we were brainstorming and we, uh, Leslie got her creative juices going. And so we took this photo and we created a mosaic from it, right? Just kind of, okay, we wanna do something, something kind of neat. And so here is the finished product for all of our Women's Giving Circle members this year. You'll receive this beautiful hand printed, I think this is a screen printed scarf. I don't have the dimensions there, but you'll see it says Lead, Learn, Give. And it's from the photo from our very first grant report from Girls Place. So to commemorate our uh, 15th year, you, we'll be giving these scarves out at our next event next month, uh, October the 19th. So if you can, please join us. We're gonna be at the new Drummond Bank. It's a beautiful, beautiful space. Uh, we're gonna kick off our 15th anniversary there. Uh, if you can attend, that's fine. We'll hold on to a scarf for you. Um, we also, if you wanna just drive through and get it, we'll be giving those out as well. But we are so excited to give everyone uh, a, a 15th anniversary scarf from the Women's Giving Circle featuring uh, the girls from Girls Place from the very first year of our grants. So with that, I am gonna turn it back over to Erica for final announcements, thoughts, questions, feedback. So Erica, it's back to you. Technical difficulties, unmuting, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, I wanted to give uh, to take this opportunity to give a shout out to Barzella, Leslie, and Nancy. Thank you so much for orchestrating, facilitating this Zoom today. This has been amazing. 15 years, it's hard to believe. Um, so thank you so much, ladies, for all your hard work. We definitely could not do it without you. So now for some quick updates, um, Barzella mentioned the 15 year kickoff reception. So that'll be at Drummond Bank, October 19th. Invitations went out. So if you did not receive your invitation, um, please let us know. Um, let me see, this will be the opportunity to pick up your scarf and reach out to the community for the hybrid um, event. Um, for anyone looking for more information on the circle, we will be having our Women's Giving Circle 101 on October the 28th. This event will be held via Zoom and details are coming soon via email. Also, the leadership team has been busy working on an anniversary reception in January. 
So we will be inviting significant others to join us for this momentous occasion. We will be sending out more information soon on that as well. And for our last but most important update, please be on the lookout for your donation package, which will be arriving via mail um, next month. This packet uh, this year will include, um, <clears throat> excuse me, stories from the last 15 years, as well as information on how to renew or join the Women's Giving Circle. Thank you again for joining us today, and I hope to see you all soon. Have a great rest of your day.